I mean, so when I talked about dropout, right? Did I give this probability P S the probability of selecting a neuron or actually dropping a neuron? Uh, what did I write P S probability of dropping a neuron? Is it because when I went back, I was just thinking, what did I say? Did I say drop a neuron or select a neuron? Drop. Okay, then that weight should be one minus P. Because right, it's like saying that I mean, you know, if I, if I if I drop for sure. That means it's almost like probability one. Okay, that means I'm I'm almost certainly going to going to drop it. Then its weight should be one minus p. It should actually be much less, right? Because you're certain to drop. Okay, so if it's a, if it's a probability to actually pick, then it should be p times the weights. The activation should be multiplied by p. If I'd written actually probability as the the probability to drop a neuron, it should be one minus p. Okay, none of you mentioned that, but uh, I just realized that. You know, I wasn't sure what I meant as P there. Okay, hmm? so just a small sort of a correction there. Okay, now let's uh, let's just go on to this initialization of the weights, which is the last thing on you know, which is regards to MLP. So initialization of weights, uh, similar to the way we initialized, or sort of right. I mean, we did something for the inputs, right, which is a, which is a pre-processing. Similarly, one should also be careful with respect to how you choose the weights. I mean, if you choose your weights arbitrarily, right? I mean, you know, let them go to any range, you know, that they were, that they feel like, then, then there could be trouble. I mean, when you when you start the the entire entire process, so so right? I mean, so this is uh, what you call this. Uh, researchers have evolved a systematic way to actually do the initialization. First of all, and it's very clear that it should be the, the weight should be very small. And uh, the simplest thing to think, right? Think about is that W should come from a come from a uniform sort of a distribution. Between let's say minus a and a, okay, <coughs> where I mean a is some small number, where a is a small sort of a positive number, okay, very small positive number, okay. But then uh, this also works, okay, to some extent. I mean, if you start with some very small value like a, could be like 0 0.001 or something, will still do reasonably well. But there is a more uh, formal thing, right? That let's say people have found out. I mean, which I'll think and I'll just mention here. Uh, and I'll also I'll, I'll let you figure out right that uh, don't choose weights to be a constant or zero. Okay, that is something that I want you to figure out why what will go wrong if okay weights should not be that mean when you start right should not be a constant should not be zero should not be initialized to zero or a constant should not be initialized to zero or a constant value. Okay, this I'll, I'll leave it to you to figure out why you should not do that, and what you should ideally do is you know pick it to be uniform. And uh, there is this paper, uh, what is that, 2010? It's called Z Xavier initialization. Okay, this is one of this is, uh, this is an author's name. So, and so the way he does the initialization is as follows. So, uh, so according to him, you should draw from uniformly from minus root 6 by root of fan root of fan in plus fan out to root 6 by root of fan in plus fan out I'll just I'll just, I'll just right, indicate to you as an outline as to how they how how we arrived at this so that it doesn't look like some crazy thing uh, so, so for example, right? I mean, you know, if you if you if you look at the activation, right? And uh, and this initialization. So this fan in is like right number of number of uh, number of inputs into a neuron, like in that layer, okay, in some ith layer, into a neuron. And this initialization that we are talking about will happen at every layer, okay, into a neuron, which will be the same as the case for every other neuron. And fan out will be the number of number of outputs going out of the neuron, going out of the neuron in that layer, which will be the same for all of them in fact. All the neuron, any neuron you pick right, the number of inputs are coming into it and the number of outputs that are going out of it. For all neurons it will be the same, therefore you can just look at it at any one neuron. So, fan in is this and fan out is this. And uh, so, suppose, suppose you, you look at the activation at any 
uh, at any ith neuron and suppose you start with the first layer right where the the input is being applied and then you have let us say your a i to be let me just write this down. So, a i is equal to let us say summation let us just ignore the bias and all for the time being w i 1 x i okay, where z i is going from 1 to n that means I have got I have got n inputs and uh, I am kind of looking at the activation in, in, in the ith neuron and I am at the first layer. So, so the input is all x i s. So, as you go forward right the inputs will be will be a i themselves right I mean right, those will be the input to the next layer and so on. Now, if you look at variance of uh, okay, okay, let us call this sorry, this is not AI, this is A1, okay, I is there, I is on the right, okay, this is A1. So, if you, if you look at variance of A1, this is at this is at, let us say now at one particular neuron, okay. So, if you look at variance of A1, right, this you can show, I mean, assuming that both, both X and X and W are random, you can show that, right, this is simple, I mean, so you can show that this is n times variance of W into variance of x. I mean you, you just have to assume uh, a statistical independence between x and w and uh, this is easy right I mean you just have to expand it out take the variance. So, uh, all the cross terms will vanish and the only thing that will survive is w square x square take the variance. So, that will be simply a product right as long as they are independent. Now, when this goes now this is at the this is the first layer, but then at the at the you know, second layer right what will happen? This this where x right, which is what you are taking as the as the initial input. So this so this where x when it so x is now the now the output of the first layer right that becomes the you know input to the second layer. So what will be the what will be the what will be the variance of the input to the second layer? What will be the variance of the input to the second layer now? N times n times where w no because right that is what that is what is the variance of the variance of the you know first guy right. So, I mean it is like this right. So, you will be looking at x and right? this x is going in and then you have a first layer and the and the output of the first layer of course, you know we are, we are ignoring a non linearity and all that right right now just this again this is just a sketchy thing, but gives you some insights right and then and then right I mean you have the you have the you know second layer and so on. So, assuming that so, so, so right x is here correct. Now, initially initially you had you had a variance for x right now the variance that is let us say let us call this as this is not really the input right, but then this is an input for the right next layer. So, let us call that as say x dash ok. So, that x dash will then be n times n times variance variance so I mean so at, at any kth let us say depth right what will you have you will have like n times where w to the power k into where of x right. You see this, right? I mean, at the second layer, at the third the layer. So, so basically, what will happen is every time you'll get right n times where w, times where x, and then you go to the kth layer. It'll be like n times where w to the power k if you are in the kth depth, times where f x. So, which then means that right, actually things can either blow up or you know things can actually you know things can actually just shrink right? because it right, depends upon what happens to the n times where w sort of quantity because our focus is now on the initialization initialization of the weights. So, if this n times where w right if it is a number that is that is actually greater than 1 then then your variance of a k will all blow up and and if n times where w is something that is actually less than 1 okay then then your then your variance will actually shrink. But if you want the, want some kind of a balance to be maintained then probably right what you are asking for is something like n times where w to be equal to 1. So, that somewhere so, so that right along the along the way the variance is not getting getting either right too blown up or too shrunk right. So, if you want to maintain so some sort of order right inside it then one way to kind of look at it is say that n times where w let me let me you know pick my variance of w such that n times where w is 1, but in this case we are only looking at n which is the which is the which is the dimension of the input. But if you look there right there it is taken as uh, you know the both the dimension of the input as well as the dimension of the output right is also taken into account, but for the time being right again just to keep matters simple we can simply argue that if you want your variance of a k s to be somewhat stabilized then what you need is n times where w you can ask that or you can say that where of w should be equal to 1 by n ok. Now, if you if you if you, but then uh, but then you have say w being let us say if it is uniform between minus a and a ok then what will be the what will be the what will be the mean of w 0. 
right and then uh, then if I want to if I want to write ex estimate the variance right and uh, so right this is going to look like this right. So, you have got like minus a to a therefore, it should have an amplitude 1 by 2 a right in order to make sure that your area under that is 1. So, if you look at this as your f w of w right, that is how it will be right. So, so if you if you actually compute variance of variance of w right that will be integral yeah x square. So, that is uh, x square f x f x which is 1 by 2 a d x or d w right whatever it is that you want to use ok w if you want then minus a to a that will be like what uh, 1 by 2 a x cube by 3 minus a to a. Uh, so, you will get what x cube by so this is 2 a 1 by 2 a and then 2 x cube by 3. So, you will get uh, x cube by 3 a ok uh, no I, th I think right let us all put the put this huh? a oh a cube a cube yeah, not x cube. Uh, a cube by 3 a which is uh, which is again a square by 3 sorry. So, your variance of uh, w is actually a square by 3 right and uh, that is where that is what you have uh, for example, right just now we showed no in the other one. So, we said that where of w right should be we said equal to 1 by n right where uh, where n is the n is the dimension of the input dimension of the input ok let me write big of the of the input right, but uh, but then suppose let us say right you were to take both the input and the output into account then what will happen is this will become 1 by fan in plus fan out so this will become where of w when right when and and, and of course and, and the only thing is that right, you need to you need to you need to you need to scale this by 2 by 2 when you I mean, so you take the average and therefore, what will happen is that this will kind of go up and then you will get 2 by fan in plus fan out I mean if you are if you are just simply taking n then it would have simply stayed as n, but since you are taking an average of both the input and the output right you should I mean so again right this is something that the, that the author writes in that paper this taken as fan in f uh, what a fan in plus fan out by 2 or 2 by fan in. Now, where w right in terms of and finally, your goal is to find out what is that appropriate a right you know that I mean you want to be able to draw from from a uniform uniform minus a to a right that is what you want to draw from, uh, but uh, your idea is to arrive at that a right you do not know what that a should be and therefore, right what you have now is a square by 3 or a square is equal to 6 by uh, fan in plus fan out plus fan out or a or, or a should be equal to plus minus root 6 by root of fan in plus fan out uh, plus fan out. Okay, which is which is what uh, which is what is that Xavier initialization, right? If you go back here, okay, this is what I wrote here as uh, as actually at the the, the the right initialization, and in a way, right? I mean, you can argue, I mean, it's not completely arbitrary. It's not like you know somebody just thought that it's a fancy thing to take it like that. So you can actually go around and show to a reasonable extent that you know with some reasonable arguments. Uh, of course, you know, we haven't involved the nonlinearities and all. Some somewhere, right? There is a little bit of hand waving here and there, but that's okay. I mean, uh, just to give give an insight into why why this is chosen that way. In fact, there, there is a there is a later paper I think you know that is by Kaiming He and uh, that came later and that in fact claims you know I will not I will not go to the details of that, but that came that claims that draw from uh, what is that uh, minus 4 by fan by root fan in plus fan out comma 4 by root fan in plus fan out ok. It says draw from this and uh, you know both both work equally well and uh, Right, when you when you implement something right you will have to you can state which one of these things that you want to use for your you know, initialization. Mm -hmm.